Hey y'all, this is Brett Schmidt from IBM, and today I'm going to show you all a little bit about test management and how to create a defect from a failed test. So first off, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up uh, Google Chrome right here, and I'm going to navigate right into the dashboard for uh, our testing platform. And right here we're taking a look at at uh, a dashboard for a project that is affiliated with something called an Avery. And an Avery, in this example, it is a, uh, it's a drone that has a bunch of different components to it. So what you'll see in a little bit is some tests for the camera, uh, the surveillance system, and also the drone itself. And right now we're taking a look at something called a, a dashboard. And now this is a super common capability throughout the entire platform here. And what this dashboard is showing is stuff that is affiliated with the testing environment. Now, you don't just have to have stuff affiliated with just the testing environment here. You can kind of pull in stuff from all throughout the entire project. So maybe you want to have some stuff displayed with requirements here. Well, we can do that too. It's really whatever you want to see we can display here. And this information also is it's completely customizable. So right over here, just to call out a couple things, we have some charts showing the uh, kind of status of these test cases. And this is talking about the surveillance system. This is dealing with kind of, hey, what's going on with a manual flight? And we can see mousing over it that we have nine failed test cases associated with that and that we have 26 passed. And we have one that we're not exactly sure uh, what happened to it. Then over here, we have all of the test case records and a pretty easily uh, kind of visual indicator of if it passed or failed or not. We have these red and uh, green symbols right here. Another thing too is that anything that is a blue and kind of looks hyperlinked, which just go goes back to the idea that this is really built on um, like a web browser application, um, is that it allows you to click on it and pull up that exact information. And I'll, I'll show you that in just a second here. But one pretty nifty feature is that when you mouse over it, you kind of get this little window within a, a window that appears here. And that's called a, a rich hover. And the, uh, the big benefit being with that is you don't have to click on it and get off track. And the big benefit with this whole rich hover thing is that you can click on it and be taken directly to where this test case, this defect, really whatever that is blue and hyperlinked requirement system design, there, there's, there's a million things that it, it could be. You can click on it and you'll be directly taken there. Another thing that you can do as well is that you can click on any really thing that it could be anything in a chart, a diagram, whatnot. So now we're going to go check out a test plan. And all I need to do is simply click on this. And we are now taken inside of the test plan itself. And I just want to call out a, a few things here is that over on this side of the screen is that these things are they're, they're called sections. And the way they like to think about these is that they are essentially headers in a Word document for, for your test plan is that you know that your test plan is all set and all ready to go once all these are, are, are filled out. And they're customizable. We have a bunch of ones uh, available out of the box and you can really kind of add and delete whatever you want to, whatever fits, uh, whatever works for your organization. So I'm gonna hop down into two sections down here. First, we can take a look at some test cases and we can see that, hey, the test cases are connected up to something else. And when I mouse over that, we have this window within a window, uh, a rich hover up here. And this shows that this test case is connected up to our requirements. And what I can easily do is if I just open up in a new tab, we'll be taken directly to the requirement that this test case is associated with. Hopping back into here, let's go check out some records from what happens when test cases were actually uh, kind of tested. So some things to call on here is that there's a whole bunch of filtering that you can do. You can search by name, kind of test case, test environment. There's a whole bunch of stuff. You can also kind of filter out by uh, the last result. And there's a whole bunch of options here. We can also do priority or if you know the specific ID, you can search by that too. Uh, one thing that I just want to touch upon about the ID here is that each, you could kind of call it record Anything that's really created inside of the system here has a unique ID associated with it, which what we're able to do with that is anything that's done, anything that's changed, you have a full history of it that you can go back and take a look at and find out who changed what, when they changed, what did they change about it. 
which that is all these random numbers that you see right here. Looking over on the side of the screen, we can see all the tests that passed and failed, but say we had a whole bunch of stuff here and we just wanna pull up what failed. If I come up here, we can click on failed. And if I go over to filter, now it's gonna pull up everything that has failed for us. Now let's go hop into a failed test. All I need to do is click on it and I'll be taken directly to it. If we wanna kinda of go back up for a second, you may notice that all these little tabs are popping up top here. So we can easily kinda of hop back to the prior screen or you could use the back here, whatever works for you. But now coming over here, let's go check out the actual result. Now, it's taking us to the results detail tab from all the sections available over here. And some things that I wanna call out is that it shows you what test plan it's affiliated with, which if you click on that, you can be directly taken to there. The test grace, if there was an associated test script that would appear right here, and also the execution record that we clicked on to get to here. So now, how do we actually generate uh, a defect from this failed test? All we need to do is go up to this defects tab hop down to this create new defects button. And now we need to select, hey, where's this defect actually gonna live? And we have a few options here. Now, since this is more uh, a specific kind of thing that we know the defect is associated with, I'm gonna say that is a defect for the drone itself and not for the higher level project. So I'm, I'm just gonna click okay on that. And now we had this screen popped up where we need to fill out information regarding the defect. Now, since I clicked on create defect, it automatically defect, if, sorry, it automatically defaulted to the type of defect. Clicking on this list here, if we wanted to change it to something else, or say maybe we wanted to create a story from this or create a feature directly from this failed test, we can do that as well. Maybe we want to have it go directly to a design review. Well, that is entirely possible too. Now what we can do is we need to select how it is going to be filed against. And since this is dealing with more so of the uh, camera, I'm going to say that it is surveillance. We can set the severity and I'm going to say that it is a critical thing. We're going to leave it as sprint 1.2 and I'm going to say that it is found by us in testing. We can put the owner here. So I'm going to say, hey, Pete, this is your test. Please take care of this. We can also set the priority as high, medium or low for Pete. So I'm going to set it as high and we can say what sprint that is planned in. And we know that this is such a critical issue that needs to be done inside this sprint. Coming down to this description box here, if, we, if you want to add more information, you can do so. You have a full text editor that you can do stuff with. You can add in external hyperlinks. You can also tag people directly. So maybe you just want to tag Pete down here as well. And another interesting thing is that if a work item already exists, well, you can add that right here. And I'm just going to add a work item as an example. So somebody could click on this and be directly taken to the work item too. So now I'll just click OK on this. And to actually show where this lives, all we need to do is we can either click on it, but I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. And we have seamlessly transitioned over to the workflow management land. So this is showing the defect and the number right here, the 550. All that means is that that is the unique ID for this. So anything that's changed, edited, made about this, which is if I hop over to the history tab, we can see, hey, all this stuff was, was done, which the reason why we're able to record that is because it has a unique ID of 550. We can set people for approving it. We can also connect up stuff underneath links to it. So say we want to connect this up to a requirement. We hop down over here. We can say, hey, this is what's uh, mentioned about it. We can also add related. We can add a whole bunch of other information. So we can connect this up to work items, system design diagrams, requirements, whatever you want to connect this up to, you can do that as well. You can also directly add files in here. Really, whatever you want to do, you can do. Now, let's actually start working on this defect, and I can show you all where this lives. So, so all I did right here was change this to start working and clicking on save. Now that we have this in development, let's go check out, check out the program dashboard for workflow management. Hopping over here, we can see that this is the defect that we just created with ID 550, failing test case, camera focus. And mouse over it, we can see for our status that it has now been changed to in development. And all of the information that we set up in our test management solution is right here. And if we want to go access the defect, all we need to do is click on it here, and we'll be, again, directly taken to this.